Well, welcome to All Classic Car and the updated and expanded Barn Finds and Restoration Projects Collection Part 2. And to begin with, we find ourselves back in that Portuguese scrapyard and a Peugeot 404 pickup truck looking a little worse for wear. Was it restored? Did it ever make it out of this scrapyard? I very much doubt it and that lack of windscreen isn't going to help at all. Next up, the uh, XK120 fixed head coupe that a friend of mine bought not that long ago. There is a separate video all about us uh, unpacking this from its uh, packing container um, and our first sight of it. He's busily putting it back together as I speak. Um, but yeah, quite a project. There's a review of the same old Jaguar. What a project that is. But I've seen him piece worse back together, so I'm looking forward to an update on this one fairly soon. Um, these photos, some of these photos were published on the channel a little while back. Um, but I've gathered them all together, added some extra photos, and included this commentary for the first time. Next up, a, a little Austin A35 saloon, a little two-door A35. Doesn't look too bad, really. This one had been robbed of its original registration number, I think, and put out to grass, sadly. Um, what happened to it after I photographed it many years ago, I do not know. Now, here is a car that I bought for myself, and I should have hung on to. This was a Mulliner-bodied Daimler 15 Coupe absolutely stunning old car this was i sold this when i was having to raise some money to buy a little dodge many years ago but i should have hung on to that if i could now into a field somewhere now this was quite a few years ago and a mark one i think austin mini looking a little bit second hand but um, i'm sure if this turned up now someone would put it back together um, but yeah very much a field find car this video is all about barn finds hedge finds garage finds restoration projects and so on uh, my mother-in-law had this old Toyota stored in a building for many years over in Portugal. Um, sadly, it's no longer there, but it looked to be in quite good condition, actually. Back in the day when Big Dodge was stored over in, in Poynton, it was back in the 1990s, uh, just outside the building that I had the Dodge in was this old comma. I could have had this for £150, but I didn't buy it. Maybe it was a good thing that I didn't, but uh, what a lovely old thing. Now, autumn 2022, and this is a French registered Rover P6, the Rover 2200 TC, the twin carburetor car. It doesn't look like it's moved in quite a while. Now, I had to think about this one. This is an interior view of a pre-war car, obviously. I think this is an Austin 10 Litchfield interior view, the dashboard and so on. Um, quite a solid little car. Clearly not been on the road for many, many years, so definitely it was a restoration project. Down at Malvern in 2010, we went to an auction of classic commercial vehicles, and amongst them was this very crusty looking old Albion. Plenty of rust, um, obviously needed a new cab making for it, I would have thought, but did it ever happen? Did NXP 420 ever get restored? Now, next up, a standard Vanguard van, no less. This was in the building alongside the old uh, 1932 Morris Minor that I've got. Um, I did make a few noises about buying this as well, but it wasn't for sale. And then I believe it did end up getting sold and uh, changed hands a few times afterwards. This is an interesting car. This is a Seat, loosely based on the Fiat 124. This was in Portugal again quite a few years ago. Now I think this was about 2007. We were driving around looking for interesting things. This is a Bobby Dazzler, probably a one-off, a coach-built comma. Um, this was a just post-war comma. I think it had been used as a laundry delivery van or something like that. Um, I believe it's still around, but possibly in pieces. Now, down in St. David's in southwest Wales, many years ago, there used to be a little motoring museum. And outside were these two dinky little Austins, an A30 on the left and an A35 on the right-hand side. I wonder if anyone saved either of those two. I don't think the museum's there anymore. And staying in Wales, 2006, I think it was. Uh, visited a little scrapyard in the middle of nowhere. I believe it's all gone now, but there's some Austin Somerset in the background and in the foreground, all sorts of classic car panels just sat there waiting for someone to buy them. Oof, I think this is a Comma PB, a Comma PB based camper van. Um, clearly hadn't been used for a long, long time, so definitely classifies as a field find or a hedge find vehicle. Back to the cars robbed of their original registration numbers. We've got an Austin A40 on the right hand side, a Mark 1 in fact, and an A40 or an A50 Cambridge alongside that, and a couple of Morris Miners and maybe a Minx in the background, well, I'm not quite sure, or a Riley 1.5. 
And back to Portugal, um, we spotted this as we were just driving around aimlessly in the countryside. This is a Renault Juva 4. Looks like someone had started doing a bit of work on this restoration project and given up um, for sale in the window, but I wonder if anyone actually took this one on or not. Thanks to Vince for this particular photo. This was taken in 2022, so one of the new photos for this barn find collection. This is a Singer 9 Coupe. Very nice indeed. To the Lakeland Motor Museum. This was quite a few years ago. This is a standard Swallow, a Swallow bodied standard. A VC 9447 is the registration number. It's based on a Singer uh, standard 9 chassis. Um, very nice it is too. This old girl is an Opal Record P2. I don't think these were ever sold here in the UK. I don't remember ever seeing them. Um, this was a report trigger again in 2007. Quite sound, bit of surface rust, but nothing too bad. Um, hopefully this one went on to be saved. Didn't look too bad at all. And here we've got a good old Ford Popular 103E. Little 1172 side valve powered car of the 1950s. Yep, yeah, we've got a P1800 Volvo. This is one of the Volvo built cars. The early ones had Jensen bodies and they had the cow horn bumpers on the front. Now this has got the straight bumper, so it's a later car. Similar engine to that in the Volvo Amazon Saloon. And this was in Conway in North Wales many years ago. Hiding behind a wall was this little carrier. It's no longer there. I did check not that long ago. Did have another look just to see if it was still there. But sadly, it's long since disappeared. Must have been interesting getting it in there. And here, an ex-AFS or Auxiliary Fire Service in the Second World War, Fordson 7V. And this had the V8 petrol engine, the old side valve V8 petrol engine. I think they were also available with diesels as well, but this was the petrol version. Down to the NEC for the classic restoration show and this uh, barn find Austin, I think it's probably an Austin 12. Is it an Ascot or a new Ascot? Something, something like that. And this was in South Wales again many, many years ago, at least 20 years ago, an old Morris Isis. A bit like the Morris Oxford, but the six cylinder car. Quite a rare car, but this one was in a very, very poor state, so I don't think anyone was going to be restoring this one anytime soon. I'm talking of vehicles that aren't going to be restored anytime soon, is this very crumbly looking Bedford CA van. Oh dear, oh dear. That's the Series 3 of the Mark III with a deep single piece windscreen. But yeah, that one wasn't going anywhere ever again. And on the subject of Bedford CAs, this lovely little pickup truck, or tipper truck rather. This is a Mark I Bedford CA, quite a rare survivor. This had been used originally by a council on the south coast, I believe, and um, possibly in their grounds department, something like that, um, but fantastic. And this lovely Saab, uh, regulars will know I am fond of an old Saab. This is a Saab 92. And what a cracking original looking car that is. Like I say, restoration projects, barn finds, they're all included in this two-part set of videos expanded especially for this year now we've got an Austin Gypsy in the foreground and in the background is a wonderful little Austin 7 special that I bought back in 2009 I think it was dragged it out of the building where it's sat since 1959 and that's another one that I should have hung on to but you know <laughs> back to Portugal and this is a BMW 700 the coupe version they're quite rare I mean you don't see many of the two-door saloons but the coupes with that fastback roof quite thin on the ground Many, many panels at that Welsh scrapyard. See if you can identify many of them. Some of them look like Austin Somerset to me on the right hand side. Not sure about that blue one on the left. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's up at all. Answers on the postcard, please. Anyway, carry on with barn finds and restoration projects. We've got this mighty Wolseley 6110 hearse. I'm sure I've seen this advertised on and off over the years. Plenty of work there for somebody to do. Is, will it be saved? Um, at least it hasn't been banged, but uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be safe. It must be rare. And a few years ago, this popped up for sale at a local auction house. REP 725 and Wolseley 1500. That's one of the later examples with the A43 and the back lights. Uh, wasn't too bad a condition underneath all that snow. Very dusty, very barn findy. There's this Jaguar S-Type seen at the NEC not that long ago. Uh, lots of signs saying, please do not touch. 
Um, is that just because they don't want to lose any of the dirt on it perhaps? But yeah, that's a proper barn fine looking car. Somewhat shabbier and somewhat greener is this rare comma cob van uh, based on the running gear of the Hillman Minx. Plenty of rot evident I can just see in those front wings. They always rot away at the back at the top where the bonnet hinges are on the bulkhead. Here we've got an Armstrong Siddeley. This is the Star Sapphire. The original Sapphire had a taller front grille um, which extended above the front edge of the bonnet whereas the Star Sapphire has the shorter grille. I hope I've got that the right way around. This was in the scrapyard not far from us, it's long since closed, a Sierra 1.8 LX. A few little dings down the side, but otherwise it doesn't look too bad. But back then there were probably loads of them around, so no one really cared, but now not so many. Oh, this was lovely. This was at the NEC early this year, 2022, at the Restoration Show. This is a wonderful barn find spec Rover P2, the 10 horsepower car. VN 6934 from the 1930s. What a bobby dazzler that is. There's a rear three quarter view of the same car. Absolutely wonderful. I wonder if the running boards are with it or if they've been lost. But yeah, what a great old saloon that is. I hope that goes on to be preserved. Ah, oh, there's my old Saab 95 van, the bullnose van. One of three that Saab GB imported in 1962. That's now been restored and is uh, in a museum in America, a Saab museum over in America. 280YBH is the registration. If you do a Google search, you'll find photos of it now. Okay, and this is a Jensen Healy. Um, this looks like it may be the kind of project car that someone started and then their progress has halted for whatever reason. But it looks like it needs a fair bit of TLC. And beyond a bit of TLC is this sad old lorry being dismembered. It's a scrapyard over near Sheffield many, many years ago. A friend of mine took me for a guided tour of his one of his favourite scrapyards, and most of it had been cleared, but there's still a few interesting gems dotted around, including this sad old lorry. And here we have a Welsh-registered Ford Prefect, the four-door version of the 100E, side valve powered, of course. Plenty more barn finds to come now. This, we were picking up my Bedford Utes from the docks at Chatham. And this incredible car, I think it's about 1935 Chrysler Airflow, was also waiting to be picked up by someone else. What an incredible car that is. Uh, where is it now? Has it been restored? I'd love to know a bit more on that one. And here we've got an example of the, uh, the Austin 152 all steel pickup. A bit like the Morris J2. I had the Morris J2. I think that appears somewhere in this collection, um, but this is an Austin 152 version that I found a little while ago. Again in Wales, quite good hunting ground around there. Back to Portugal, and we've got a Morris 1000. Uh, surprisingly rusty really, you'd have thought the uh, climate over there would have helped these survive quite well, but clearly uh, this one had suffered somewhat, and there's no back window in it, so the interior is going to be roasted now. And here we've got a Fiat 500, part dismantled, perhaps a stalled restoration project, something like that. And uh, seen here in a building at a scrapyard in North Wales. Back to the NEC and the restoration show. Quite a few crusty looking cars and uh, including this fiberglass and very, very dusty Markovs. Here we've got a bit of a restoration project, an Austin 7 box saloon all together. Doesn't look too rusty, so hopefully that one will be done. And uh, some of these have been lost to the special building craze, but hopefully this one will remain as a saloon. I can't remember where this was. I took this photo way back in the 90s somewhere. We've got a Morris Marina van, one of those Talbot Alpines just on the left there, a Mini, and a huge ERF recovery truck. And out to grass is this Daimler version of the XJ Series 2. Doesn't actually look too rusty, but it could all be rotten underneath the back, especially where the rear trailing arms mount on the back edge of the floor. They always go there. There's the console classic. This is the 315. And there's another photo of this in part one of the Barn Find photo collection. And there's a rear view of the same car. There 
was the Lanchester LD10 in the previous collection in part one and here in part two we've got another one. This one's in slightly better condition, a bit dusty, hasn't been on the road for quite a long time but it looks like quite a sound car, nice interior, lovely little cars these, I really do rate these a lot. And back to Bedford CAs and another very very overgrown Bedford CA. Um, that wasn't going anywhere ever again and it was a uh, face to face with an HC Vauxhall Viva looking similarly sort of dilapidated. Oh, a very sad looking Thames 400E here, a 1500 weight Thames, it looks like a camper van version, quite rare, quite desirable now, but here, sort of 15 or so years ago, no one was really that bothered. The gutters were pretty rough though, they look pretty rotten. There's another one of those Renault Juve 4, not much paint on this one, so it's been left outside with minimal paint on it, and uh, yeah, predictable outcome I'm afraid. I wonder if it's still there, sat on top of that old garage. This is a wonderful old Chevrolet. This is the sort of 41 to 1946 area, the cab over engine, the COE. Cab over engine Chevrolet, what a great machine that is. That's around and about, finished in bare metal with Mobil on the doors now, I think. Another old pre-war Ford, I think it's another Ford 8. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's a Ford 8. Uh, the Pops didn't have the spare wheel on the back panel like that, so it's definitely one of the pre-war cars. old lorries here parked up this was quite a few years ago I photographed this one I think it's another AEC quite a few AEC Matadors featured in part one and there's another one in part two the Morris Miner just behind it Miner's front wings back to those Bedford CAs in the undergrowth outside a huge crumbling Victorian house that you couldn't see from the road you went up this narrow driveway and suddenly you're confronted with about seven or eight Bedford CAs in various states of disrepair and dismemberment this is a photo that someone else took, I didn't take this one. Um, these photos that are included here have come from all over the place. This was a GT6, one of many cars that they went to go and see, but the building was very, very damp and it had predictable consequences for the sills and the bottom of the doors on this car. There's the Morris J2 that I had, but same shape as that Austin 152 pickup that I showed just a few minutes ago on here. Rare, rare vehicle. When I had this, I think there were only about two known in the country. They're seriously rare because they all just rotted away. Back to Portugal, we've got a left-hand drive VW Beetle basking in the sun, but again, with, as with many of these cars photographed over there, quite a lot of rust evidence. So, uh, you know, even being in a warm climate, there's no guarantee that these cars aren't going to be rusty. As this Beetle shows that they can certainly be rusty. There's a close-in of the interior of a Vauxhall. I think this is probably a Velox or something. You can tell it's a column shift automatic with the uh, little gear selector on the top of the steering column there. Cracking the A40 van here, the 1000 weight van, sort of contemporary to the Austin A40 Devon and the Somerset. The commercial variants, the vans and the pickups were sold alongside both the Devon and the Somerset throughout the 1950s. I just love photographs of these old barn finds and restoration projects. Here's a frisky that was set to be restored, it may well have been restored by now. But yeah, I just love all this stuff as found. Um, they interest me way more than any restored classic car. To see things as they've been pulled out of a shed or an old garage is just wonderful, I think. Here we've got a real lineup of ancient Fiats that have definitely suffered in the Portuguese weather. Probably Fiat or maybe even the Seat version, probably more likely to be the Seats, given the proximity of Portugal to Spain just over the border. The moggy in the background. Talking of uh, slightly derelict Morris Miners, this Morris Miner convertible was one of several vehicles that shared barn space with the big old Comma lorry that I rescued quite a few years ago now down in Somerset. I'm sure this one was dragged out and will have probably gone on to a new home. I know some cars were being scrapped, but anyway, here we've got a side on view of a mighty Vauxhall 25 horsepower limousine. Very original car. This one was really nice interior, as I remember. Uh, quite a rare old survivor. Wonderful looking car. It's great to see this one. Back to the NEC and we have a Jaguar XK140 uh, looking very much like a barn fine car. It's a right hand drive, that faded paint I thought maybe it was an American import but it's a right hand drive so presumably it's found here somewhere and there's an old number plate on the front as well. And here we've got a Peugeot 404 pickup, still quite a few of these soldiering on in the warmer parts of Europe. 
um, and I'm sure this one was probably still in use even though it looks a little bit dilapidated in places but you know still going so uh, why not keep using it this I found ooh, again quite a few years ago this is a pre-war Morris Minor this was a van a post office van and while there wasn't a great deal left of it um, there was enough there to make something out of it the chassis was there it had the proper van radiator surround and so on this Portuguese scrapyard just keeps on giving. Here we've got an early record, an Opal record. Um, we've seen a P2 already, and I think this is probably the previous car, the P1. Um, Left-hand drive, of course, rare car. I don't think they ever sold these here in the UK. Oh, there's my old Talbot, three litre Talbot that I dragged out of a garage just a few years ago. I would love to have kept that. It did sound nice when I eventually persuaded it to run, but it's just a bit too big in the garage. I couldn't get the doors open <laughs> once it was in the garage. So. That was a bit problematic, but it was a lovely old car. I've been parked up since 1976 and parked up for a similar length of time. But outside is this little gathering of Roots Group cars and a Ford Transit Beaver Tail. Literally just must have collected that rapier, parked up on the garden and it was uh, left there. Looking a bit faded and definitely needing work is this old Ford Thunderbird. I don't know too much about American cars, so I'm not quite sure what year that is, but I'm guessing what, early 1960s, 62 or 3, somewhere around about there. Really nice barn find Austin 7 here, one of the top hat saloons. Lovely car, about 1930 or thereabouts, I would have thought. It's on the reissued number plate. Uh, BF mostly are reissued number plates issued by DVLA when an original car's red just been lost. Over in Portugal we spotted this. This is a this was a really nice Peugeot 403 parked outside the garage. There were a few old cars parked outside. But this was one of the nicest, even down to the Peugeot mud flaps on the back. That was that would just that would clean up beautifully. That slightly faded paint. Oof. And here we've got the remains of a vintage Chevrolet. This was photographed at the Chumley Castle Classic Car Show quite a few years ago. Just look at those sort of improvised wheels on the front. Um, I think this came from Uruguay or somewhere like that. But it's very much a case of make do and mend. This is one of the Bedford Utes that I bought from Australia quite a few years ago. This started out as one purchase and snowballed into three. A friend of mine over there um, did all the collection for me, so it kind of snowballed into three vehicles being bought. Back to Portugal, and we've got quite a rare Morris Mine here. This is one of the low lights, one of the very first of the MM Morris Mine. side valve powered, the low set headlamps just next to the grill. Uh, quite a rare car, hopefully that one's been restored. Back to the Welsh scrapyard in the mid-2000s and a Spitfire 4 Mark II. That doesn't look in bad condition at all. I can't believe I didn't try and buy that because of the metal hardtop and everything. It doesn't look bad at all. Okay, it's sat on grass, so maybe the floors and sills might be a bit iffy, but well. And here we just got a pile of mangled metal, but we can identify some side valve Ford wheels. And the shiny hubcap suggests it may be part of a Ford Prefect or maybe an Anglia, similar to the one in the garage here at home. But yeah, definitely side valve forward. And here, a somewhat grubby looking Simca. Looks like it's just been pulled out of a barn somewhere. A bit mouldy, a bit of mildew dotted around, but that will clean up all right for the most part. Paint that front wing and you'll be good to go. The trio of old Fords here resting quietly. I think this photograph was taken in Norfolk somewhere. I think we've got a pop on the left, a prefect on the right, and a little Thames. Uh, half ton pickup in the background. Mark 1 VW Golf GTI, very much in barn find spec with a similar Capri part behind it there. An old Mercedes fire wagon here. This was at the uh, restoration show in early 2022. It's a Jowett, I forget which model, probably a 10 or something like that. Um, but yeah, quite a rare Jowett and currently being worked upon. You've got a starting handle there, so maybe the turning engine over, setting the valves or timing, etc. Quite a few years ago, I went with a friend to go and look at a couple of cars, and amongst them was this really sound looking 300E Thames van. It, I mean, it had been in that wooden building for quite a long time, and apart from a bit of speckly surface rust, it was a quite a sound little vehicle, as I remember. 
looking a little more desperate is this Ford Corsair. It's a four-door saloon version of the Corsair. Uh, I don't think anything was going to happen to that anytime soon, so it's probably been used for spares, I would have thought. This was quite a few years ago I took this particular photo. And over in Portugal again, um, we often spend our holidays just driving around looking for things. This is an OM truck. These are actually built in Italy, but it looks very faded. Hadn't moved in a very long time, so it seemed just right to include it in this particular collection. A couple of old Vauxhall PAEs here. Someone's had the front door off this particular car, so yeah, looking pretty sad, but at least parts from it no doubt kept other cars going, so that's all good. Out to rest is this late 1930s or possibly just post-war Wolseley. Now, this era of Wolseley, the body shell was based very much on the contemporary Morris, albeit with a slightly different bonnet and the grill, of course, the tall vertical uh, Wolseley grill. A moggy miner, not much paint left on this old girl. Continuing with these barn finds and restoration project photos, we've got this, which is an A40 pickup, not a factory pickup, but someone's got hold of an A40 pickup cab and built their own body on the back. And quite a good job they've done of it as well, I think. Quite a neat little truck. Not original, but great. What a great little thing that is. Back to a scrapyard that I used to frequent in the late 1980s, long gone now, over near Lim in Cheshire. And there was this, uh, this old Ford or Thames truck, a 4D or an ET6, something like that, of the 1950s. Uh, clearly hard work, they're not going anywhere. And here we've got a little Trabant, one of the little two stroke Trabants from East Germany. Moldering away in a field. This was quite a few years back. We saw this as we were just driving around aimlessly one day. Morris Miner gathering rust and a very intriguing, probably a one off homemade caravan alongside it. I wonder if they're still there. I do quite like that caravan. This was in Portugal and a building just next to the circuit, Estoril, the racing circuit. I'm not quite sure what we're looking at here. I think the radiator says Austin on it, on the badge there, but. I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at here, whether it's a combination of parts, I don't know. This is a bit easier, this is a Wolseley 680. The main body shell is shared with the Morris Oxford MO, basically, and the longer front end and the traditional Wolseley grille on it, of course. Very popular with various police forces back in the day, in the 1950s. This is the first E83 W pickup truck that I bought back in 1989. I found this in the Welsh field, dragged it back and stored it at someone's yard that we knew. Um, yeah, that had been parked up for many, many years. I stumbled across it by accident and uh, I just had to try and buy it. Back down to the NEC for the classic restoration show. We've got a Sunbeam Alpine here. Looks like it needs a bit of TLC. Maybe it's had it by now. If you know anything about this or any of the other cars, let me know in the comments, please. It'd be great to hear. I don't think the future was looking too rosy for this Seat or Fiat 600. Even the, the bodywork un underneath the back window you can see has just disappeared, it's just rotted away completely. So maybe it had been backed into a damp hedge and left for a long time, but yeah, I think that one was pretty much past it. And looking a little faded and no longer there, because I checked recently, is this Morris Z van. We photographed this outside the little museum in Shropshire quite a few years ago, probably about 10 years ago. And lately uh, we've called in and it's not there anymore, so do you know what's happened to this particular van? Here we've got another old Ford, I think this is a pop. Next up, a very covered over, very dusty looking Humber Hawk of the 1950s, complete with tow bar bolted to the back bumper. These are nice old cars, I do like these big comfy old cruisers. Next up, Austin 7, another box saloon. I think we went to go and have a look at this one somewhere over Stokeway, I think it was. Um, stored in a unit somewhere. I can't remember why we didn't proceed with it. I can't quite remember now, but... Oh, here we've got a grey Fergie. A nice old Dennis lawnmower in the uh, undergrowth behind it. I've got a feeling I do remember where this is.
some years ago I was tipped off of an old Humber in a barn so I thought I'll go and have a look and with the, uh, the owner's permission, the farm owner's permission I took these photos. This is a Humber Imperial, this was top of the tree back in the 1960s, um, quite a Swiss motor car indeed and also a Swiss car once upon a time anyway is this huge very sad looking Jaguar Mark 10 and behind it a Triumph TR7 future was not looking good for either of these two cars and the same can be definitely said of this Sunbeam Talbot um, this is quite well known in the area and every time I've been to see it a bit more of it has disappeared and I don't think there's much left there at all last time I went to have a look it was there was just a few bits on the floor here we go we've got a few more Roots Group vehicles taking root here literally Got a, well, it could be a comma cob with windows or it could be a Hillman Husky with windows from new I'm not quite sure but yep Roots Group products there sat there rusting away merrily and here dusty but really smart little Peugeot 301 nice little car pre-war mid 1930s I would have thought Couple of Morris Miners next, uh, both Morris Miner Thousands looking a little sorry for themselves and if they've been there any length of time there won't be much left of the floors and the rear spring hangers on these two cars. Um, bit of a shame but well you can't save them all I suppose. Maybe they've been on, maybe they've gone on to be restored, who knows. And as for this Austin taxi, I wonder what's happened to this. Looks like it's been on fire or someone stripped all the paint off it and left it outside. I'm not quite sure what's going on there but yeah, it's looking pretty desperate. The roof's all bent as well. No windscreen in it, probably no trim. And the future wasn't looking too great for this uh, Volkswagen Beetle either. Oval windowed Beetle. Um, it's just uh, funny enough, a couple of months ago I actually had a look on Google Maps to see where this was, to see if it's still there, but it's all been redeveloped and the driveway tidied up. So this one's long gone, I'm afraid. Back to a scrapyard, and we've got an international tractor there. But that would a bit of TLC spot a diesel and that will probably fire up again. And here we've got an Austin 1300. Uh, it doesn't look too bad in these photos, nicely faded, but I think there was a fair bit of timberworm going on underneath, so uh, it wouldn't have been a quick car to put back on the road. This belonged to someone that their indoors used to work with, if I remember right. And now, spotted in an old container, was this this is an Austin shear line these were built from 1947 to 54 if I remember correctly big comfy old car not hugely popular now really few people will take them on but very expensive to restore and here great little restoration project this is a Morris 8 Tourer series 1 Morris 8 this was at the NEC here a Peugeot 504 this was spotted outside a local-ish MOT garage a few years back now but it had been so long since I've last seen a Peugeot 504 that I had to go and take some photos of it before it disappeared a very sad end for a Rolls-Royce Silver Spirit not sure if it had been rear-ended or the back end's been cut off for some other reason but yeah it was uh, <laughs> not looking great here an interior view of the Austin 12 I think it was that we saw a little bit earlier on the maroon one at the NEC this was a view through the back window showing the, the parlous state of the interior the headlining hanging down dashboards all there at least but yeah, a lot of work there as is the case with this Isetta I used to travel past this quite regularly once upon a time and then one day the cover had blown off so I just walked past and grabbed a quick photo of it it disappeared not long afterwards so whether this one's been restored I have no idea Another one of the Seat or Fiat 600s. Clearly someone was fond of their old Fiats. And this was at an old museum, an air museum up north somewhere. And it's a Bedford based fire appliance off an airfield somewhere. XRAF, Royal Air Force Fire and Rescue. The faded sign on the side says. And here a pre-war Dodge hearse. What an incredible machine that is. 
I'm not quite sure where it is now, but I'm sure it'll be around somewhere. Etched glass in the back. Quite an amazing vehicle in really good condition, but probably very low mileage too. This is one of the more recent photos added into this collection. This was at Malvern in 2022. If you've not seen the video yet, please check that one out. This is a facelifted 700 series Volvo, probably a 760 GLE, I would have thought. Looking a little bit time-worn, but apparently it's due to be restored, so we'll keep an eye out for that one at future shows. Now, the A40, this is a Mark II. You can tell that by the shape of the dashboard and the slightly longer wheelbase, different boot catch arrangement. Um, yeah, these started out 948 and became 1098cc. Now, the rear view of this little Simca estate appeared in part one in this collection of barn find photographs, and here is the front. This was just parked up on the side of a road somewhere, didn't look in too bad a condition, so maybe it hadn't been there too long. I wonder if it's still there. And here, we're back to North Wales, this was 2006, and it's a very dismembered Riley RM. And it's the 2.5 litre Riley RM with a pale blue badge on the radiator shell there. Clearly a failed restoration, which is a bit of a sad sight. I do like these, but buy a bad one and you've got a world of trouble. Now, we spotted this one earlier this year. This was down at an airfield in Shropshire, and it's a fairly early example of the XJ6 Series 1. This is a six-cylinder car manual gearbox i think if memory serves but nice car here uh, the remains of a pre-war Vauxhall 12 um, clearly it was not in the best of shape if i remember right i think um, the bloke who owned it his wife cut the roof off they had a bit of a falling out so she got someone in with an angle grind and chopped it up for him nice and over to east anglia somewhere and another photo of these old fords that i managed to get some pictures of a while ago this is an e493a ford prefect very very dusty and no back window and here's a bonny little uh, bedford ca i think this one had been parked up for many years very original just as parked 360 atx whether it went on to be restored or not i don't know but a great little vehicle that is. I do like the old Bedford CAs. There is a collection of Bedford CA pictures on this very channel. And here, a part dismantle side valve Ford. Those larger headlamps, I'm guessing it's probably an Anglia as opposed to the pop. And the uh, that's a vacuum tank for the vacuum wipers on the bulkhead there. And I don't think the pops had those. Another Riley RM. I went to go and have a look at this one in an open fronted barn a few years ago, not that far from where we live. The back end had suffered quite badly with being exposed to the weather. The front end of the car was really nice. The interior was good too, but the back end structure was not looking too pretty. A really nice barn find Hillman Imp here. Um, some of the stands at the restoration show at the NEC held early every year. Um, they're really quite imaginative and creative, and some of these dusty cars just look fantastic, you know. Um, I much rather I find these much more interesting to photograph than fully restored cars. Now this is a huge old lorry. Clearly a removals company in Oswald Street ran this one, judging off the faded sign writing on the front. What it's based on, I'm not quite sure. I'd guess at a Bedford with a slat on that grille panel, but I really don't know anything more about that one. Back to Portugal, we've got a Citroen Light 15 with a grille hanging off. We've got a mini estate on the right hand side there, and in the background the Seat Ibiza something more modern in the background as well which i'm not very interested in but yeah that's citron's body a very tired looking standard 10. Uh, this one's not going any further i don't think i'm not sure the police ever operated these um, but yeah i think the end of the road was nigh for that particular car back to that portuguese scrapyard all sorts of cars here dotted around i think this is the roof of an opal record p1 complete with period roof rack sat on top of it. But yeah, I mean, that's a nice looking car. It'd be nice to think that that one maybe got saved, but I doubt it was. This is uh, the, the remains of a Ford Model Y. I bought the salvage rights to this for very little money years and years ago, and I got a few bits and pieces off it, which I thought might come in handy for something. Um, but I'd known the car for a long, long time, but yeah, it was just falling to pieces. Uh, only slightly better was this Ford Model C. Um, I think it's a Model C or a CX, I'm not quite sure if you can tell the difference from the back. A slightly different grille, um, but this is a pre-war 10 horse car with the 1172 side valve engine. Talking of side valve Fords, I photographed this one years and years ago. Whether it's still there, this little Pop 103E, I'm not quite sure, but I do like the colour of these. That back window being out won't have helped the interior much though, which is a bit of a shame. And the shiny hubcap means it could actually be an Anglia. Anyway, 
Daimler here, we've got a fairly late example of the two and a half litre Daimler V8 Saloon on the G-plate, that's quite a late one, and there's a bit of a Project P5B Coupe alongside it. Now this is a pre-war standard Flying 8 Tourer. This was a rare little car, you can tell it's a pre-war one because it's got the grills in the side of the bonnet, the post-war 8s. Um, look very very similar but don't have the grills in the side of the bonnet that's the way to differentiate the small standards this is a real odd ball we spotted this one in portugal this is the vw brasilia someone kindly identified this one for me a while back um, quite an unusual car It'd be nice to think that this one survived as well but whether it has or not i do not know here we've got a vanguard estate the phase three standard vanguard estate what a practical bit of kit that is. I can just imagine that with a period roof rack on the top and make a great rally support barge with spare wheels on the roof and car spares in the back. That's really nice. And here a rear engine Chevrolet Corvair. That's a rare sight here in the UK, especially as it's a convertible version. Most of them are coupes, I think, but this is the rare convertible version. There was also the Monza, which had a couple of extra carburetors. I think that was a tuned up version. And here, a side-on view of the Morris 8 Series E. In this case, it's the four-door saloon. They did also the two-door saloon, either side of World War II. But yep, this is a four-door car, still with the original slopey headlights as well. Back to standards, and we've got another Standard 8 here. This is one of the 1950s Standard 8s, very much like the car we've got. Um, whether this one's been on to be restored, I don't know. I don't think it fell into good hands i've got a feeling that it didn't get restored but anyway here is a wonderfully dusty ford model y sat in a garage somewhere what a great old photograph that is looked like it had been sat there a long long time but i just love photographing and seeing these old photographs people send me photographs from all over and here we've got an austin this could be an eight or a ten looking at the back window i think that's a two-piece rear window which makes this an austin 10. The Austin 8 had the one piece slightly smaller back window and the 10 had the larger split window at the back. Now South Wales again and a side on view of a long parked Series 1 Land Rover. And judging by those bits of metal on the floor, the chassis probably wasn't brilliant. I've got a feeling there was salty air in that area not far from the coast so that probably didn't help it. Now here's a handsome old girl, this is a Rover P2, it's a pre-war Rover P2 sports saloon with a lower roof line compared to the standard saloon and only two windows per side. The standard P2 had three windows per side but this is lower, altogether more sleek. Everyone likes old minis and this is a really rare, as it says on the board there, 1960 Morris Mini Minor. Super original, still dusty, the original paint, beautiful, just how you like to find these old cars. Now, what is this? This was photographed driving along years ago on the motorway. I'm not quite sure what it is. Clearly there's something missing at the front. Doesn't appear to be a bonnet or anything unless it's tucked away inside, but what car is that? Clearly a huge saloon, but I've no idea what it is. No oh dear, this was at an air museum and an old, probably wartime era tanker slowly disintegrating into the grass. Bit of a shame that one, that one looked fantastic, restored next to an old wartime bomber. Anyway, still plenty of these barn finds and restoration projects to go. Here we've got another Peugeot 403, a black one in Portugal, flat tyre, but otherwise doesn't look too bad at all. And this we spotted down in Hastings in Sussex. This wasn't too long ago, I think was it last year possibly. 1965 Morris Minor 1000, looking a little bit tired and the suffering with the salty air down there. Um, yep, salty air and steel cars don't go well together. And here, the remains of an old Simca. There's a Mini behind it as well. Rivals back in the day, I suppose, although Simca's a four-door, whereas a Mini is only two-door, of course. There's another old gem here. This was at the NEC. Lovely little Simca Arond. Uh, always interesting cars on the Simca stand. I wonder if this one's been restored. It doesn't look too bad, but I guess underneath it could be a bit frilly. Here's an oddball one. Do you know what this is? This, I think, is a Jensen Interceptor, the original Jensen Interceptor of 1950 to 1957, based on the stretched Austin A70 chassis with a 4-litre Austin Shearline engine. 
uh, under its bonnet, and I think it's only about 88 of them were built. And here, in the undergrowth, the remains of a Ford 100E Prefect. You can see the badge there, just about poking through the grass and the slatted grill as well. But yeah, that had clearly been sat there a very, very long time. As has this Volvo. This is a 122S. You can just see a little badge on the front wing at the back there. So that means it's a twin carb car. It could be the B18, the 1800, or the two litre car. I'm not quite sure which one this would be. But a bit faded, but doesn't look too bad otherwise. Just check the inner wings because they can go rusty. Thanks to Vince for this photo. It's either a Singer Vogue or a Humber Scepter. I'm not quite sure which. Part restored, undergoing restoration. So hopefully it won't be too long before this car is back together and on the road again. In the auction at the NEC, we've got this Rover 3.5 litre, the P5B, B for Buick, because it's the uh, engine was a Buick design, basically, that Rover took on, re-engineered and put in their big saloons. I do like this, very original, not a barn find, not a project. This one was still in use, but a 404 pickup. I could be very tempted with one of these. Another 10 minutes or so of these barn finds to go, and here, rear three, three quarter view of a J Reg, so 1970 or thereabouts, Mark 1 Ford Capri. Looks like it needs a little bit of TLC, um, but no doubt a wash would help. And there is an E Series Vauxhall. We saw this a little bit, we got a glimpse of this car before with that Simca Arond pickup truck alongside it, but this one shows the Vauxhall off a little bit better. Whether it's a Wyvern, a Velox or a Cresta, I'm not quite sure. Left-hand drive. But yeah, definitely worth saving, as is this, an MGC Roadster. The three-litre straight-six powered MG of the late 1960s. Very desirable car. I'm just seen at the side of the road, somewhere in northern Portugal, there's this gathering. We've got a couple of Japanese pickup trucks there and the Peugeot 504 Estate. Not a car you see very often in this country at all. Looking very sorry for itself. What's happened to the bonnet on that? Has it been under a drip in a garage somewhere? This is the Jensen FF, the four-wheel drive car. Very similar looking to the Interceptor, but slightly longer front and those extra slats in the front wing tell us that this is the FF Ferguson Formula. And there out to grass is a very poorly looking pre-war Ford 8, that's a Model Y, two-door Ford Model Y. That's not going anywhere in a hurry, sadly. I wonder what that is on the right, something a lot more modern, but I wonder what that is. A very original looking Austin Maxi here. A uh, bit of information on the board there, that's always welcome. Freeze the video if you want to have a read of that. In November 1973, Austin Maxi 1750, known as Mavis. I always like it when people put information boards out. And here we've got the badging on a Portuguese registered Ford Prefect, 100E Prefect. But what is the L406? Were they all labelled up as that? Or is that something that someone's added later? I'm not quite sure what the relevance of that little badge is to the car. There you go. That's a Ford or 100E Prefect. Whether that was a car destined to be restored or just being kept for parts, I'm not quite sure. It's looking a bit desperate. And this was back in 2007, so if it's still there now, it's probably halfway into the earth by now. And also looking a little bit haggard, there's this MGB uh, GT rubber bumper car. Uh, looks like it needs plenty of work, but all the parts are available for these, so even the worst MGB can usually be brought back to life if you've got deep enough pockets and enough time. And these aren't too badly supported either for spares. This is a Rover P6 with V8, according to the badge on the front. Definitely worth saving. If it's the 3500S, then it's got the manual gearbox. Oh dear, someone's been jumping up and down on the roof of this little Mini. Looking very, very sorry for itself now. And here we've got a barn find Triumph. Got a TR3, I think it probably is. And here's the body shell of a Morris Minor, pre war Minor, about 1932 or 33. I bought this because I needed some parts. It was just a body shell and a few panels. Uh, 
I kept some of the panels back for my little two-seater and sold on the main body shell to someone who needed one. Here, this is the four tourners. We never got these here in the UK as far as I remember. Um, there have been one or two that have been imported since, but um, yeah, I don't think these were ever, I'm not sure these were ever sold here in the UK from new. This one's got a bit of a ding in the front wing, which is probably why it came off the road. But here in the UK, I saw this a couple of years ago, parked on the side of the road. A Chevrolet, I think this was the, it's not a half ton, it's quite a big truck this is. I can't remember the exact model number of this one, but yeah, a big old bruiser. Definitely needing restoration as this uh, Mark 1 Jaguar. I'm guessing that's the 2.4. Um, very nice, these are available with either the 2.4 or the 3.4 version of the XK engine. Forerunner of the Mark II, of course. Here we've got one of the Neuer class of BMWs. This was quite a plush one. This is the 2000 Ti Lux. This would have been a quite an expensive car back in its day in the 1960s, but clearly fallen on harder times since and uh, maybe it's destined to be restored or just used for parts and here we've got a 41 to 46 oh so original uh, Chevrolet pickup truck half ton pickup truck beautiful original paint on it just wanted to wipe over with some boiled linseed oil but that's a gorgeous looking old truck now this is the Lancia Flavia that was parked next to the old common that I rescued from a Somerset barn quite a few years ago now this was very very crusty I stood on the top of this and you could hear all sorts of unpleasant crunching sounds in the body um, underneath the back window there so yeah bad bad condition much better though is this ford pop 103e let me know in the comments which of these cars you would have liked to have rescue um, and if you're a big fan of these barn finds as well it'd be good to hear from you here's an old austin an old austin westminster big six cylinder car you don't see too many good ones of these nowadays. Is this one beyond the restoration? Um, if the interior is good, then it might be saveable. But if the interior is in a similar condition to the body, probably not really worth it. And here, a couple of Series 1 Land Rovers awaiting a little bit of TLC. Probably come from the same home, I would have guessed. And, uh, but where are they now? Have they been put back on the road yet? The early one is in the foreground with the headlights behind the grille. Oh dear, very sorry looking Morris Minor Traveller here in an old corrugated tin shed. Not like it had been sat there for a very, very long time. Looking a little bit better, but still very much a restoration project. There's this Sunbeam Talbot 90. I'm not quite sure where the front bumper's gone, sir, but um, yeah, eminently restorable, I'm sure. Maybe it's been done by now, I do not know. Back to NEC a few years ago and there was this great display of this Austin A90 Atlantic in a bit of a parlous condition. Is this restorable? I mean there's a lot of deep set in rust there so uh, it may just be a parts car. This was my first pre-war car but this was about 30 odd years ago this was. I swapped my two-stroke Saab van for this. This is a Vauxhall 12 ASY registration AND 300. I'm sure this one's still around somewhere, but it'd be nice to know if it got restored or not. And here, the desperate remains of a genuine Austin A40 Countryman. So this was basically the van with sliding windows on the side and the rear seat. Very rare car, but as you can see, what a rock box that was. Stored very poorly and really, really bad. And also pretty bad was this Austin A35. Many, many years ago, someone gave me this as a spares donor for her indoors is Austin A30 that she used to run. Um, we did get a few bits and pieces off this and the rest was scrapped. But yeah, CJP, I remember it well. And here, this is a Mark II Hillman Minx just post-war, about 47 or 1948. They only made this era of Minx for about a year, I think. So the drophead coupe version of what was only a one or so year model um, is quite a rare thing now. Many years ago, her indoors went home to Portugal, and while she was there on holiday, she spotted this E83W in the undergrowth. So fortunately, she was able to grab a photograph of it. Uh, it's not there anymore, sadly, I did check out when we went back more recently, but uh, yeah, at least it's a photo of it. And here's a really intriguing little one-off sort of home-built tractor type thing based on the remains of a bullnose Morris Cowley. It wasn't unknown for farmers and such like to chop down cars when they got to the end of their useful life and make them into little vehicles suitable for use on a farm. And this looks like it's been on the farm too for many, many years. 
a Series 3, I think that is, Land Rover. Uh, plenty of green stuff on that one. The chassis do tend to rot on these though, so you'd want a good prod around the cross members on this one if you're thinking of taking that on. And now another little side valve Ford, a little Anglia, you can tell that by the bigger headlamps. Um, yep, that's the little Anglia with the 8 or 933cc engine under the bonnet, same as ours. Just a few more to go. Here we've got a Volvo Amazon Estate, gradually being consumed by the undergrowth. Um, these estates are quite sought after now, so this one's definitely worth dragging out. And as long as the inner wings and the floors weren't too rough, it's probably worth saving. Whether it has been or not, I don't know. And this was a bit of a scene set up at one of the early Goodwood revivals. We've got a few cars there looking a bit, a bit mouldy. I'm not quite sure what the car in the foreground is. There's a Ford in the background, quite a rare convertible version of a Zephyr, I think what the car in the foreground is, I'm not sure. Here we've got a half restored work in progress, Austin A35, a little four door saloon. Probably been done by now, the Ross style wheels, I'm guessing are off a midget. And here, a quite a neat little Austin Allegro estate. I've always been quite fond of these. I always think they're much nicer looking than the saloons, if I'm honest. Almost there now, this like I say is part two in a two part set of barn find and restoration project photos and this is a French Willam, a little van, a tiny little van, a bit like the sort of thing you'd see Postman Pat driving and this dinky little van on an R registration rounds out this part two of the updated and expanded collection of barn find and restoration project photographs. I hope that was of interest. Please check out part one if you haven't seen it yet already. That should already be on the channel. So I'll link them two together at the end of both videos. Uh, thank you very much for watching this. I hope it was of interest. If you love your barn finds and restoration projects like I do, please pop a note in the comments and let me know what you've got on the go at the moment, what work you've got, what cars you've got in the garage. Um, please check out the rest of the channel and there'll be more videos about classic cars coming along very, very soon. So bye for now.